We'll go a long way to promote our Purple Heart Project. Heck, we'll put our logo on just about anything. In fact, we'll even sign it for you. I'm happy to announce we have our third t-shirt in our series. This one says Wood for Good. It's in military green. We've enlarged the logo to make it easier to see. Help us spread our cause. Get yourself a t-shirt. We're live. Hi folks, welcome. Are we actually on time? We are. <laughs> Breaking records every week. Uh, quick introduction, Jake's behind the camera. Park. Behind the microphone, making this all happen, and the frick is now. Megan. Oh. Oh. And her assistant, humble frick. Thank you. Way over to the left, and I'll call Rusty, is Ken. Sporting his new e-bike legs. <laughs> Yours truly. And we have Luther. Colonel Luther's on tonight to answer questions. Super Dave is not, is not on. Gets no credit. So there'll be a much quieter night. Our special guest is going to be Kevin Burris. You've heard me talk about Kevin several times. I'll introduce him. He'll come in at about uh, the one hour mark and introduce the Purple Heart Project from the perspective of a combat wounded veteran. Many times wounded. Mark Smith. Mark Smith? He couldn't be. He just left here. He left here an hour ago. Oh, he's fast. Mark Smith's on. Huh, Mark? Gina's here, too. Gina's on. Oh, so he, if you don't know Gina, you place an order and it comes out with wonderful efficiency. Thank Gina. She's, she does all of our shipping. Um, also, uh, who did I forget? Nobody, I hope. So Angie. this is our... Angie. This is Angie. Angie and is, is are Angie and Lynn on? Yep, they just Hi, said hello. Hello, Lynn. Angie and Lynn. Angie works with us. She and Lynn, Lynn helps her, do all of our T-shirts. So if you want to help us promote our cause, Purple Heart Project. Oh, Rex is missing tonight. That's what I was thinking. He's got a cold. So we told him to keep it home. Uh, they come in all the sizes you need, three different, three different uh, colors and three different slogans. Latest being Wood for Good. The original was Wood is Good and Wood Doing Good. All having to do with our program where we bring combat wounded veterans in and treat them to a, a very intense six-day hand tool workshop, which, by the way, uh, I should tell you right now, so Jake, help me out here, May class. We normally schedule six classes, one each month from May through to October because of the coronavirus and they've closed, the borders are still closed. We had to postpone our May class to late August. That's still a go. But most likely not. Yeah. Well, we're hopefully. Our June class is postponed into October. Our July class has had to be rescheduled for July of 2021. Our regularly scheduled August class has been rescheduled to August 2021. Our September class is still on, and, as, and our October class is still on. We'll see what happens. We, uh, we really don't know any more than what the uh, government tells us with the two countries, whether or not they're going to open the borders. So just a couple of quick things. Uh, our donation, our fundraising tables needs to be cleared out. So we have three items here that have been donated generously with the proceeds going to Purple Heart Project. You've seen this before. This is a, a number eight shaker oval box. Bird's eye and cherry with a lift out lid. You can put a lot of stuff in there. And this was donated by Keith. Keith Cole of Battle Creek, Michigan. And I think Danny uh, Bell is the highest bidder on that so far. This um, guitar uh, that you may have heard, if you didn't, go look at, check out our, our uh, session last weekend when we had Manolian playing it. This was donated by the East Tennessee Luther's Guild. And the current bid is 2000 and I think we've got somebody that's ready to put in a higher bid. And we have a Purple Heart dovetail saw that was won. Not a Purple Heart. No. Resin impregnated, purple infused, maple handled dovetail saw that was uh, a, a, the prize drawn one night. And the donor graciously donated it back to... Uh, raise even more money for Purple Heart, so thanks to him. And he actually started the bid at 1100 so you're going to have to dig deep on that one. 
Okay, is that it? Don't forget your uh, maple syrup. And I uh, just, I we just finished some of these the other day, so I thought I'd show them to you real quick. Every once in a while, I get in the mood where I manage to break free for 15 minutes and go get started on something different. Ken would beg to differ. So this is a, a Coco Bolo marking gauge, minus the lint. Gorgeous stuff. And this is uh, another Coco Bolo. Now this Coco Bolo came from a med. That's got some gorgeous color in it. I hope the camera shows that well. A med down Southern California is our our wood pusher. In some cases, and this is resin impregnated fiddleback maple, and then buffed, and that stuff just shows up beautifully. Anyways, I think these are all on the site, right? Almost. Almost. Did you want to show them that fiddleback from Mel? Yeah, we did uh, last week. Did we? Yeah. Yeah, they got a shipment because we talked about that big hunk of Coco Bolo that we got. Okay, and there's my piece of, of Vera wood that is going to be the fence on my new shooting board, and that was a gift from Ahmed as well. And that just keeps getting greener. Has the Super all Dave the time. stamp of approval? Oh, it does. Gorgeous stuff. Okay, so tonight, and so what I thought I would do, we were going to use uh, Port Orford, not Port Orford, but. No. Yeah. Huh? Yellow. Yellow cedar. And then I thought, if you haven't seen the episode, we did a video, oh, wow, four, five, six, six, six years ago called a, a Day at the Mill. And we went, we, it's on YouTube, obviously. We went out in the woods with a friend of mine up the road that has a portable mill. We cut down a cedar tree and milled it, took, the, took it home and dried it. And this is what I have left. And I thought, this would be more meaningful for Angie since we sourced this right from the tree, we'll use that native cedar on the bottom, and I just think that'll be an even better way to do it. So we're going to use Will whichever whichever of those. Yeah, I already yeah, I checked it. There's a big knot on that one. That's why if we can get away with it, we will. We we will use that. If not, we'll use that piece. We can get we can get a clear piece out of there too. But our next move is to go in and to plane these sides and to get that to the opening. So in order to do that, we need to support that, we need to support that, uh, that drawer. And what we'll do is we'll get a piece of wood that we can then slide this onto, and that way when we're pushing down, that's not flexing. That's the problem if you try to do something like put it in your vise, that's gonna flex under the weight of the plane. We want it to be well supported. So I like to use one inch MDF, all the scraps we have. You'll see how I'm gonna do it. So I need a piece that's seven and an eighth inch wide. Now I usually have some kicking around right here. Seven and an eighth. That's not wide enough. Where are you going, Ken, to grab some? Yeah. Okay, seven and an eighth by at least seven and an eighth. And I get over here. That's a piece six and three quarter. But the problem is if you make if you don't make it if you don't make it wide enough then it bounces around on you. I like to have it so it's almost tight and then it stays in place the whole time you're doing it. Now where's our uh, Jake, how's that five and a half working? It was fine. No, I didn't. Thank you. Three quarter, Ken. Is that something you want? Okay, so we'll cut that seven and an eighth. I'd use that piece right there, but that we're working on another drawer with that. Yeah, okay. And if you're, if you're on tonight and you're one of the vets 
that have been to our workshop as one of our scholarship recipients, please uh, speak up, say what class you were in. We'd love to give you a shout out and acknowledge your presence. Megan will let me know. Move this down a little bit. Now I can slide this on like so and plane it quite effectively. The idea is to plane until we touch the ends of the pins front and back. And at that point we should fit the opening or be very close. Now it's nice that this is the exact width or I can, I can span the entire width of this drawer side and I don't have to take overlap, make overlapping passes. Now when you start to get close, I don't trust my eyesight, so I'll go in there and I'll just feel. Make sure I'm going down the same amount. I'm not getting ahead of myself on one side or the other. Or front to back. Now, I'm a, I'm a little more sunken in there than I am there. And this is almost flush. So I'm going to go right about here and just get caught up. That's close. We got a, f we got a few people asking uh, when the bidding is going to be closed for the items that you've shown earlier. Uh, well... Let's close this one out tonight, and I think our, uh, Megan, can you confirm what the high bid is on, on that? I think it's Danny. 275, wasn't it? 275? Was that on last week? No, no, no. no. 275 so was, the, was what the low angle jack went oh, for. Oh, I don't think that we've had any bids on this one. Yeah, week. yeah, we did. Danny will speak. Is Danny on? Dan, speak up. It's been a couple of weeks since we... Yeah, it has, but we did. Dan, I know Danny wanted it. Danny Bell. I just didn't think that we had No any pressure. No, we really didn't. So we'll we'll uh, if we get one bid over eleven hundred on this, we'll close it out tonight. Show show them again, Jake. There's a couple of you asking they missed what it was. This is a um, purple infused resin impregnated dovetail saw maple. So the nice thing about it is the color never changes and the resin impregnation increases the weight by about 40 percent and it feels really good in the hand and that color goes all the way through. That's the color of the purple heart. They're very close. So that'll close out tonight if somebody beats the 1100 that it's sitting at. The guitar, same th if, uh, if somebody beats the 2000 bid the, the 2000 bid was put in by a friend of mine who was, I think, just being supportive. I know he was. So if somebody goes over that, we'll close that out tonight as well. So whatever the high bid is, as long as... In other words, there's a reserve bid. The reserve bid on the guitar is 2000 The reserve bid on the saw is 1100 And uh, there is no reserve on the shaker box, but I know it's at... It's over 200 Wait, what's the saw again? Uh, 1100 Okay, that was the final pass. No, I still got a little more to go right there. I, I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that until I get caught up on this one.
Any vets on, Megan? Pardon? Oh, you're making a list? One of the guys who won one of the gift cards last week just donated it back to the Purple Heart. Yes, we've had that a couple times. Thank you. Very generous. We can't give everything away. They keep giving it back. Okay. Now, that's, that's just starting to fit in there. I don't want to go any more on that. I'm glad I stopped what I did. And same thing on the front. So that's done on the side. Now... Um, okay, let's flush up, let's flush up the, uh, top, or the drawer, the top of the drawer front all the way around. So I want to flush up here and here. That one's set down underneath, so we don't touch that. How are our numbers tonight, Frick? We're at 408 right now. Okay, we're a little proud there, and nothing down there. So what I'm doing, in order to get this to match that, I took the first pass to here, and I'll just keep going, and this one I'll hopefully be able to go the whole way. Take another one to get rid of those mill marks. One more. Now, starting right here on the joint line, one pass. Put the bench dog in there. One pass. Now the underneath, this we normally wouldn't touch, but this is unlike a normal drawer, since we're not actually referencing off of the bottom. So I'm just gonna do a cleanup pass. That's a little proud. One pass here. That's the bottom of the drawer front. I'm going to do one more. And we'll do a pass here. So what I'm doing is looking down in the throat to line the blade up with that line so I don't drag go across the fiber on this piece. How thick of a shaving do you, would you say that is? Have you got that? Is there a battery in there? Is there? Works. So, you ask, I'll tell. This is a Mitutoyu. We'll zero it in. It's got a ratchet on it so you don't squeeze it excessively. No. It is zeroed. I would guess and say that that's probably a 1.2 thou. Can you? Yeah, it's a little thicker than that. No, no, 1.2. That's what I'm going to stick with. I got a fold in it. Oh, way off. 1.9, almost 2 thou. I'm rusty. I used to be able to guess really close on those. This, oh, this cover's broken. I used to travel and do all the wood shows with it. And people always wanted to know. Okay, so let's do the front. And I should be able to use this. Oh, look at that. What are the odds? A lot of people comment on the beard. 
Oh, yeah? Good or bad? Split. What? Split. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know how you people wear beards because it's driving me crazy. It is gone tomorrow. It is itchy. And it's out of, uh, it's not a fashion statement. It's out of just laziness, not wanting to shave. One more pass. I'd like to do one more cleanup on that. Okay, so this is the part that I'm somewhat in uncharted waters. Now, before we go any further, I want to just cut these, cut these sharp corners off. Don't come all the way out because you don't want to see them. You don't want to see the corner missing where the drawer front meets the face frame or the face of the cabinet. But I don't, I don't want this to be uncomfortable to touch. Same thing on the bottom. Wrong way, could you tell? Can you hear that? If you're listening really close and this little microphone is accurate enough, you can tell when you're going the wrong direction. Okay. Now we got to do the bottom, and I was going to do the bottom first in case we were thinking we were going to have to glue it up, but we're not. We're going to be able to get that out of one piece. So, now how are we going to do this? We got to get that space just right. So, what I thought I would do is we'll cut a piece of stock. That will mim that will just use as a reference. It doesn't matter about the bottom length, the width of it, just the top set, the top part. So, we cut a piece of stock, or we use it. We use another piece of wood, and we get that into it. We it, we get it so that the f distance from the top of the drawer, or in this case, the top of the scrap piece, to the top of the groove is just where we want it, so that that'll fit in there. I'm used to filming when we do the online workshop. I can shut the camera down and stop and think about something before we continue, but I can't do this anymore with the lives. Anyone to say hi to while I'm thinking? Um, we have Kevin Burris on. Yes, Kev's our guest tonight. Um, Kev. Jeff. Kev got his, I think we already announced this, but Kevin got his bench, his bench. Oh, Kev, also, would you do me a favor and talk about the, purple, the, uh, the uh, bench brigade too? I forgot to mention that to you. Who else did you say, Megan? Jeff. O'Connor. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Jeff. Oh, Jeff's on. Yep. Oh, does he want well, to he has nothing to do because he doesn't have a dovetail saw. Well, he wants to make sure that Jake is actually doing not something with it. It's not just laying around. Tell, show him proof that we've got it. It's here. We it's have under it. our care. It arrived. It arrived. It's in the thinking phase. Thinking about getting sharpened. Don't, um, don't bang that around. Kevin Smira. Kevin. Hey, Kev. I haven't heard from Kevin in a while. Kevin uh, Smear down in Tennessee. No, he's not in Tennessee, but he's close Alabama. enough to Tennessee. Alabama. Paul. Paul in in Australia. Hey, Philip Paul. Philip Gustafson. Phil. Philip Gustafson, owner of those proud dovetails. And Ray. Cool Ray. Cool Ray. No beat tonight? Hey, Ray. I doubt you very much. Yet. You're cool. If it's hot up here... In Canada, I'm sure Louisiana is cooking. Okay, that was my thinking break. So, what are we going to, Jake, what are we going to cut this with? Huh? It's just that the pieces are so delicate. We could use a table saw with a stop. And that means dropping down on it. And, I, and we've got a rip blade in there right now, so it'll give us a square bottom. And we can finish it, we can finish it off up here because that's going to be our, that's what's going to stop us. That's what's going to act as our drawer stop. 
You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pause on this for a minute, and I'm going to go to work on the bottom, just because I've got to spend a little few more minutes thinking about this. So what we want, now when we, it's very important if you're doing a solid wood drawer bottom, you have to orient the grain so that it does not cause the drawer to swell. And because, because it's a solid piece, it's going to move so you can't trap it. So this drawer inside measures 14 by 7 and a quarter. So the piece of wood we want, the grain is going to run this way. I'll show you what I mean as it comes out of the tree. Looking for a pencil? I have a few. I don't think you can use This it. piece of wood, when it gets wider in the humid summer months, is going to expand this way. And that's all right because we'll allow for the bottom to slide out underneath the drawer back. But if we were to put the grain this way and it were to swell, it would push the drawer sides out and it would seize the drawer in place. So you always have to have the grain running parallel to the drawer front. Now, if we can use this one, we will, because it's a nice clear piece, but we need at least that much. Might be able to get away from that. Let's run that through the thickness planer and see, because we want that drawer, we don't need to have any more than a quarter of an inch. Why don't you get a straight edge? A huh? edge. Straighten that edge. Yeah. Then you know what uh, you're working with. That's got some very typical of cedar. The, the inside of the tree rots when it's standing in place. cleaned up yet but it's it'll give me a couple of uh, or it'll give me a straight reference points reference points yes that I can use against the fence I should have left that running so what's our narrowest point Check the width. We got to fit up in there about a sixteenth of an inch. So we need at the absolute minimum seven and three quarter. So I'll go seven and seven eighths. Whoa. Huh? Oh, I guess. I was going to say, why wouldn't you cut more of the knot off? Well, I'm thinking that too, but I got to get rid of... That should be it. That should have been enough. No, I got a little bit of a doty patch right there. That I can get rid of. if that lays flat. It's actually pretty good. What? Okay. Huh? Did you say good? I said that is pretty good. I gotta get rid of this. I gotta get rid of this piece right here because if it, when you put it through the thickness planer it'll pop up. Can we move this frick? Yep. All right, so the idea is 
We want to get rid of as much of this knot as we can, just because it's right on the edge. Thickness planer is full of stuff. Questions that never got answered? In case you don't know, if you've got a really big hand, I'll show you. If you're thinking about a dovetail saw, if you measure across your palm, right across the base of your fingers, I measure about three and a half inches. If you're four or more, you need a large handle. So here's our standard handle, and there's the large. I have these here because Dave was in today cutting them out. We have to do them the all by hand. So there's, this is before they're machined. So that's how much of a difference it is. So if you're over four inches between here and here, then you want a large handle. All right, I'm gonna see if I can take that off without destroying it. Good chance that that's just going to rip out. Find out in a minute. Is that turned on, Dave? It should be. Wait, wait, wait. Make sure it's open. <laughs> Oh, we, we wanted that on. Again, I gotta come back over. It's all right, I'll turn down when I get there. So we need a little more than that. Well, that's all right, that gets us away a from there. A little more? Yeah, because that's the edge. We need enough to get into the groove. Yeah, but you had, didn't you have that going all the way to the end over here? No. No, I had it like oh, this, okay. and then I moved it in a little bit like that. Okay. And then I drew that line on there just to see. I was just, there's a crack right there I was wanting to get away from. So what do we want for a final thickness? I think we can go down a quarter inch. And that's at three eighths. That may get rid of a lot more of it. So Jack Lane just wanted to give a shout out to Joshua Faust. Uh, he's the guy who made the beautiful PHP plaques for each of the, the yeah, wounded Yeah, he sent me some there. They're on the way. He provided the materials, engraved them, and even covered the shipping. So, big shout awesome. out to Joshua. Awesome, Josh. Folks. Thank you. Have we uh, got a picture of it that we can show? Apparently, Kevin Burris has one. So yeah, it's on the front of his bench. Is he? Is he? Is Kev? Gonna, is he going to be able to get out in the shop? Maybe show it. Okay. If not, you can pull it up off of my phone. <laughs> This is your handiwork. Open it up. What's going on? I can't reach up there. I don't know why. 
what do you, what do you do? You were you were playing around with this the other day. Somebody was unplugging it. Oh, I unplugged. Ken and I unplugged the dust collector. to his router and then he turned on the dust collector and, and was using the router in hopes that the dust would just sort of find its way into the dust collector. Did it? No. Okay. Pardon? Any, uh, any bids on our donated by the way, just, just you remember, I, I said it, I'll say it again. All of this stuff was donated, generously donated as a means of, which by the way, uh, the donations have been fantastic and they are, the, they, if we continue to do these as often as we do, it will support the Purple Heart Project, which is incredible. It also allows to expand things like the, uh, what we're doing with the bench brigade. All right, I'm just gonna straighten up this edge. It's already straight, actually. I'm just gonna clean it up. You see the grain really changes direction. Here I'm planing the way I need to, and then look how severe it is on that last little bit. Now, I wanna square up this edge so we can I want to hug this side and come this as far this way as we can away from that knot. So this is um, northern white cedar. It's extremely light, it's aromatic, meaning it smells like cedar, and no sitting it, over near the planer can s tell you all about that. And it's about as strong as white styrofoam. Yeah, it's not uh, strong wood. Well, it is for its weight but it has fantastic insulating properties. Okay. Should you explain that that is the end grain breaking? Yeah, it, it, it uh, well, that's actually, that cut fairly clean. Your blade has to be incredibly sharp to cut that stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is just sink the ruler into the bottom of the groove and then read what our length should be. We need 14, 14 and a strong quarter. So we'll mark that. We'll trim it to fit when we, when we get there. What did you say, 14 and what? 14, the strong quarter. <coughs> I'll go right there. I shouldn't have moved that. I thought I might be able to see it, but any idea where it is? No. Yeah, I'll yeah. plane this up there too and see. Got it. Yeah, but I can't. Give me the name. Thank Right there. Oh, look at that. I can't see it. Do it over here. 14, a strong quarter. I'll just leave it there. So, I'll tell you something. Uh,
Purple Heart related. I went to a memorial service a couple of days ago. And growing up as a kid, I had friends that lived down the street. And uh, their dad was a uh, combat wounded vet from World War II. And I don't know the whole story, but I know he had steel plate in his head. His speech was slurred as a result of the injuries. One arm was paralyzed and one leg. And, but he was just a great guy, and I always kind of treat him like a hero. And I don't know why, but, well, and I mean, I know why now, but I don't know why I gravitate towards that. But as I thought back over the last few years, what my connection to uh, the shouldn't whole you Purple cut Heart this? thing. Shouldn't you just cut this on the chalkboard? Yes. I'm thinking, I'm talking. Anyway, bottom line, his name is Joe Power, and uh, since he was really my first inspiration to, uh, or realization of what we owe these people, we're going to name our shop after him, and I, got, I wanted to run it by his children, his adult children. I got to meet, made up with two of them the other day, and they were thrilled at the idea, so that was great news. <laughs> Not that I didn't think they would uh, give me permission, but they were over the top excited, and I thought, wow, that's, so we'll make a big deal of it when the time comes, and that'll be in our new classroom. Which Ken can't wait to get to work on. All right, so. We'll just clean this up. Actually, yeah, we better. I was going to say we'll plane it first, plane the surface first, but I want to go in and get this right to length. So what I'm doing is cutting a little chamfer right to that gauge line. Uh, you might want to pull that blade. Yeah, that is a little strong. <laughs> is that the cedar? If I were to work that cedar, especially if I had to sand it, it would uh, almost choke me to the point where I wouldn't be able to breathe. In sawdust form, just smelling it like that or shaving doesn't bother me. So there's our best side. This will be our top side. That'll be our bottom. Now what we'll do is we'll plane this, and then once we plane that, we're gonna we're, we won't we don't have to worry about keeping it absolutely parallel. We get this nice smooth top side, and then we cut our rabbit. And when we cut our rabbit, we will reference off of this so that we're the exact our rabbit will be the exact same thickness all the way around. And we can go ahead and just put a final finish on that or plane that. But instead of trying to put, here's what I'm trying to say, but not doing very well. Instead of trying to put full thickness into a groove where in order to plane this, you have to keep it parallel, parallel surfaces. By working with a rabbet, we, keep, when we, we make one surface smooth, we make the groove or the tongue parallel to that, which is easy to do, and this becomes a non-reference face. We just need to clean it up so we don't have any mill marks. Ken, did that make sense? No. no? Eventually it did. All right, now direction. I think this way. When I say that is because it was hard to tell, but felt like a little more resistance in one direction versus the other. Let's see what we can do with this. Oh, too heavy. quite a bit off on that first pass. I'm going to start right here. 
And if you want to test how sharp your planes are, plane this stuff. Because if they aren't as sharp as you can get them, this stuff just will not respond well to the hand plane. Frick, you're quiet. Yeah. Nothing going on? Who says? Luther? No. Somebody's asking why we're not sanding it? Are they new? They're new. Okay. Well, we'll be nice. Well, you see that? That's pretty thin. Do I need to say anything more? That's why we're not sanding. Is that leaving plane track? No. It's not? No, well, there's some light ones. So, first thing I had to do was get down below the mill marks. Those are those rotary cutting marks. And now that I am, I'll go in and get rid of my mill marks, which are the uh, plane tracks. And hopefully we'll get rid of them all before I run out of wood. Okay. Now I'll have a look at this in the light. That looks good. Okay. Now we've got to got to fit this side to side. I'm not worried about the, the uh, this direction, but this one we have to get it just right in order for it to fit in that groove. Ooh, that's really close. Okay, so that is only what is it? An eighth? Did, did we cut that with the <coughs> table saw? No. What did we cut it with? Use the router. Did we? So if we use the router, it should be an eighth. It is. Okay, I think the best way to do that is to go over on the table saw and we'll just stand it up since it's got that uh, rip. rip blade in there. So I'll put the knotty end down in here. Then we got a nice clean surface showing on the back side. And we only need to make it... It's only an eighth of an inch deep. But we don't want it to be, we're not going to make it just an eighth because that just doesn't look right. So what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll make it about that wide. Just so there's a little bit of a reveal all the way around. We'll take this over here. Any bids, Megan? How much? Awesome. Does, is Danny on? Okay, I'm going to... Do you want that auxiliary pin? No, I don't think I need it. Even though we don't need that up very high. I'll set that for a strong eighth. I would prefer to uh, actually test it. So I'll use a piece of plywood. Actually, can't do that. Yeah, yeah, maybe I can. our back. We keep our good side tight to the fence. So I'm going to cut here, here, and along like that. Now it would be nice. Great. What? Okay, now you're what? Good. Never mind. 
Okay. Check if that joiner glass gate's open. Huh? What's the matter? See if, yeah, see if the gate's open. Is the dust collector open? Is it on? Do you feel like it? What's the matter? <clears throat> Nothing, keep going. The button's against the back. play right now. size. Here's a little uh, motivation for you to register for our newsletter. We've got a whole bunch of uh, seconds, saw seconds coming up. We've been, uh, we've been building saws like madmen. And as a result, we uh, screw up occasionally, but even a small percentage of screw ups when we're doing as many saws as we are results in a fair number of screw ups. So if you're interested, we will put it, we are only going to advertise it to the newsletter subscribers. How do they get on, Jake? Anywhere on our web thing. So any page on our website, and there's a place to subscribe. Is it time for uh, Kevin? Almost. All right, now I've just, I've got a little bit of glue that's squeezed out of the bottom that's going to be in my way if I try to assemble. So I'm going in here. And if you're wondering what this chisel is, I used to have a set of, uh, I bought these way back in the, I bought these way back in the early 80s when I was broke. But I also recognized you had to have good tools. And Sorby Gilt Edge at the time were the best chisels. They're the most expensive anyway. And I bought them, but they were so top heavy. I remember my hands would ache at the end of the day just from holding that chisel. So I ended up cutting the top off. But I took the uh, eighth inch and I ground it down to uh, about a sixteenth of an inch. I don't use it very often, but occasionally it comes in handy. It's like I just used did. Okay, now see if we can slide this in. The, the uh, the sides are thin, so there there can't be any forcing. It's got to it's got to be able to fit in there on its own. That's a good fit. Oh, that's really nice. Oh yes. I don't get lucky like that very often.
the ends, this is going to be just perfect. Now, in order to get it to go in the bottom, what I didn't do, because I didn't expect it to fit that well first time, we need to cut a little chamfer. right along this edge and that'll just help guide it in there and I'll do this one as well if I can get in there nope can't get close enough but I can use my shoulder plane so all I'm doing with this is just cutting a little chamfer right here on this tongue so it'll fit, or it'll make its way into that groove on the drawer front. I think that'll do. Now, since I already know it's going to fit, we can go in and finish this off. Bird. Yep. Subscribe to the newsletter and write, email Luther and tell him how a fantastic job he does on the newsletter. And that'll probably get you preferential treatment. Nothing. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Okay, where's my wax, Jake? I need a third pocket. You need a new apron. Yes, I do. My, my, I tried to glue my patches back on. I normally would have already had a new one. Wes wants to know, will there be a full complement of 2021 live workshop spots or will the number be reduced due to the COVID rescheduling? Say that, it, say that again, please. Basically wants no, to know, is no. there... Are we just moving this year's classes to yeah. next year? There will be there will be one brand new class next year. Well, just for sure. If the classes don't, if none of the classes <laughs> go in 2020, and the only reason they won't go is because the government hasn't opened the border. If the classes don't go, those six classes will be moved to take the same spots in 2020. And 2020. to that 2021. 2021, sorry. And to that schedule, we will add an additional class in April. So, and any of the classes that do go will open up spots for the same classes next year. We, I would love to do more, but if you saw our, uh, what we end up having to do in order to keep up with the tool production, it would be impossible to uh, take another week, another full six days off a month. The torn green there. The color looks different. It's just the uh, green change in direction. It's well, it is torn because you can see the the way the shaving came off. Just green changed. Now I need to clean that edge up. This doesn't weigh anything. I mean, it is unbelievably light which is a good thing because it doesn't add to the weight of the drawer but it still serves its purpose that's not my plane kev ready you want to go to work getting them brick yep just give me a second That is very satisfactory. Now, why is it not seated the same? So you see our see our uh, our little notch is closer down here down than it is on that end. So I got to find out what's going on there. Ooh. 
I don't know how, but when we routed that, I don't think we went as deep. Always something, right? This is deeper over here than it is over here. Use your combination square. Yeah, good idea. We're, uh, we're ready for Kevin whenever you are. Okay, yeah. let me just check this and then we'll, we'll go. So if I use my combination square, loosen it, drop that down to the bottom, and then come over here. Yeah, it doesn't bottom out. So now we gotta go in. And I, I would I could take material off of here, but this is critical to keep this thing right. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put the uh, small blade in the small router plane and we'll go in there and clean that up as soon as we come back. All right, so I wanna introduce you to Kevin Burris. Now Kevin, uh, every vet that, that uh, comes as a scholarship vet is given what's called a blue chip. And uh, we trust them and their judgment in knowing who best deserves to be in these classes. And Kevin was Super Dave's blue chip. And they met, they uh, they both live near Fort Drum, and they met at the VA there, I think, the first time. Kevin will correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, Kevin was an EOD. That stands for explosive, which, who's Kevin on here? Which one's he on here? I can Is take my diary. Yeah, I don't know. Kevin EOD, that stands for Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Oh, he's the black eagle over here. Where? I can't see. Right there. There? No, one Here? More. Yeah. Here? Yes, you're right, Jake. Kevin Burris, it says right on there. So, Kevin uh, spent 23 years, I think, and these guys go out and try to find the roadside bombs before the roadside bomb finds the guys. And uh, he endured multiple, and I say multiple, it's an unbelievable number of explosions and the, uh, the uh, negative effects of that on his body. I'll let his tell as much of the story as he wants. But uh, he came to the class, was, uh, was uh, quiet, but opened up towards the end. In fact, no, we brought, we, we actually got, we were doing a wood show in somewhere in Ontario before the, Kevin came to the class. And Super Dave was coming to work with us, and we said, well, just why don't you bring Kevin with you? So Kevin came up and worked with us, so we met him there first. Then he came to the class, and uh, he, mo he wrote a very, uh, a very interesting, and uh, um, I don't quite know how to describe the review that he wrote on our website, but it sure is very to the point as to the condition that a lot of these men are in, and women, um, prior to us finding them. Anyway... Kevin has a service dog that he brought with him, and he's done numerous wood shows with us. And now when we go, he's at the bench demonstrating in front of the public. You wouldn't think there was anything wrong. And that was after him having to relearn to walk. So I won't tell you any more other than I'll let Kevin tell you the rest. Kev, you ready? Yeah. Take it over, brother. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Kevin Burris. Uh, so uh, I served 23 years in the uh, Army before I was uh, medically retired. Um, I was doing EOD and also a combat engineer, uh, searching for IEDs, roadside and stuff. Um, suffered over over 100 IEDs and bomb blasts that uh, caused um, severe spinal and lower back injuries. Uh, PTSD and traumatic brain injury. Uh, last, my last appointment was 2016, where I got hit by a 1,600-pound bomb, um, which totally messed up my brain. And then, um, and then I had learned. I learned about Rob's uh, course by. Uh, and sort of falling into the lap of Super Dave Benson, <laughs> literally. Uh, we were both at the war Warrior Transition Unit uh, and stuff. And um, from he, Dave had, had already gone to to uh, Rob's course and had, it was telling me about how great it was and everything. And uh, so I was still 
in the army where I still had a lot of support and it was pretty easy. I didn't have to think about all the, the demons and everything that had happened over the 23 years with all the loss and everything else that had happened. And then, uh, and then the army decided that they didn't need me anymore. And then all the stuff sort of compounded on me. One, not being able to do anything I was able to do before and putting a hard hardship on my, my wife and stuff because she had to take care of me. Uh, cause you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do things I used to do. Um, I became out of nowhere type one diabetic because of all the blasts and stuff. And then, um, Dave had been talking to me about Rob and everything for a long time. And I was sort of reluctant about putting in the in for it and stuff. But, you know, Dave was like, you know, this is like the best thing. And I saw how well I was doing for, for Dave. And because I remember Dave before Rob, he had been going to Rob's, uh, he went to Rob's course and he had been doing all the stuff with Rob and he was a mess. And so I was like, he, you know, Dave saw me one day and saw how bad it was. He was like, Hey, look, you need, you really need to put it in an application. So I did. And, uh, so I put it in, not thinking anything was going to happen. And, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, what can I do to help with that? You know, what, what is it, what is it out there that, you know, that we can stop a vet from committing suicide. Um, because, you know, there's 22 vets a day that commit suicide. And um, Rob's course is one of those courses that saves people from committing suicide. And I'm saying that because he saved me from committing suicide. Because at the time... Um, I had already had a plan to commit suicide and everything. And I get, I get this nice, enjoyable phone call from this man that I've seen on YouTube and stuff. He called me up and he said, Hey, congratulations. You know, I, you got this, this, you know, you get to come up to Canada and spend this, uh, nice time up here where I'm, you're going to be able to learn how to do some dovetails and stuff. And I was like, wow. Cause I've seen him do dovetails on YouTube. I was like, that's going to be awesome. But you think that coming up to this course, all you're going to learn is hand-toed dovetails and stuff. But it's more than that. Because when you come up there, it's you're automatically, it's you're inducted into like a family. You're not shunned. You're welcomed in by his, all his family, the community. Uh, you know, they bring you in. You know, it's, it's, they pick you up. They don't leave you hanging. So if you're a vet and you're scared about going, because the biggest stress for us with PTSD is, oh, my God, I'm going to be out there in public, and I'm going to be alone. No one's going to be taking care of me. No one's going to be watching my back. But they come and get you. They come and get you right away. You have a battle buddy with you the whole time, and they take care of you. But the big thing is is that they, they feed you. You have dinner with them, breakfast with them, lunch with them every day as a family. Say prayers as a family. Uh, you know, Megan, she cooks for us all the time. And she comes in late at night to get, bake us desserts and stuff. But, I mean, you work hard uh, during this program. But the best part about this program is the whole time you're doing it, the, the, the pains that I have and stuff, the whole time you did it, it's gone away. You're not thinking about it. The, all the, all the stuff that you were worried about is gone. And for those moments that you're in the doing the woodworking and you're doing it, there, everything is peaceful. There's no, there's no pain. There's no frustration. There's no worry. There's, there's just, it's just peace. And the other big thing is, is for us as vets is normally we don't associate with other civilians, but the joy of being able to go up there and learn that we have something in common with other 
uh, civilians and woodworking and be able to talk to them. It really helps out to be able to open up and be able to associate with people instead of just being secluded. And then just the, you know, just everyone in the community up there being able to take you in and the generosity of Rob and everything else. And not to mention other people outside of just Rob and his family and everyone else that donates to it. I mean, like today from Joshua Fowles, I got this this really nice plaque for my bench that I got made. Uh, and this is, you know, and that was a that was a huge surprise. I got that today in the mail, and something I wasn't truly expecting, and and stuff. But you know, the you know the, the money that you're giving to this program or donating to this program is not just going somewhere and not helping people. This is actually going to, to, it's actually going and helping and saving the life of a veteran, keeping them alive, keeping them going, you know, keeping them safe, giving them a, a new purpose to, to keep on going and stuff. Um, Kev, where's your bench? Oh, it's right here. I'll, uh, let me... Let me do uh, flip this around so you guys can see it. So, a so right here is is the bench. So Andrew uh, Patterson, he made me this bench. He is a full time New York State Trooper, uh, and Al- uh, from out of uh, uh, Albany, New York. Sure. Yes. So, we got the American United States Army um, logo. So, Kev, how is that put on? So, he has that uh, on, and then he has, uh, like, seven layers of lacquer over the top of it. So, it's uh, basically almost embedded into it. And what's on the corners? Uh, so, on one corner, he has the 101st uh, patch. Same same idea, underneath the lacquer? Yes. And then, on the other corner, he has the uh, Purple Heart uh, metal. It's the uh, same thing underneath the, the lacquer and everything. Uh, there's the bench vice with uh, hard maple. Um Wooden vice and there's the uh, sharpening station. Show me that. Show me that uh, plaque that came in the mail today again. Is that actual purple heart inlaid into? Um, I believe so. It looks like it. Cool. It's a. Uh, it's maple. Uh, but it's like fiddleback maple, laser engraved, and uh, uh, looks like purple heart uh, inlay too. And what's the what's the plane? Uh, the plane is laser engraved. Is that a piece of walnut? Uh, or is it just is it's burned <coughs> from the laser? It's burned in from the laser. Right. And where are you going to put this? Um, probably in the. Uh, it's going to be up here in the on the front front part of the. So basically up here on the front. I still have to make a tool tray. Yeah. Awesome. Now, do me a favor. Kev, can you hear me? Yes. Stand up. How tall are you? Uh, six three. And you you've known your wife since she was how old? I've <laughs> known her since I was five. And how tall is she? This tall. <laughs> Four foot what? 
Four foot six and a half. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 uh, I've, I haven't met her, but I've, I've talked to her several times on uh, over here. It's, that's, that's cool. <laughs> and is it introduce your, introduce uh, Belle. Is she there? Uh, hold on. Bella. Belly. Obedient. Well, she's upstairs. Uh-huh. So Dexter was down here. Just tell them who she is. So Bella's my service dog. Bella. Bella. Hey, Bella. Bella. Come on, baby girl. Come on, baby. Come on, Bella. So there's Bella. She's Bella, Bella comes. Camera shy. Uh, Long haired, long haired lab? Uh, no, uh, Golden Retriever. Golden Retriever. Bella comes. Come on, Bella. Kevin, Kevin's wife is a, a dog trainer, a professional <laughs> dog trainer. Dexter said. So this is quiet, Dex. This is my other service dog, Dexter. Dex. Hey, he's a he's a German short hair pointer. No, Dex, no vest on. She's not working. Yeah, she's she doesn't have the vest on, so she's right now. Dexter's picking up her slack. She's a dog when she's when the vest is off. Yeah. Well, usually down in the shop, Dexter, he watches over me. And then D- Bella, just, she, Tell the story about when we were at the show. So, at the... So, we were at the... What, the Toronto show, Toronto right? show. So, we were at the Toronto show, and then my, my blood sugar had dropped too low. And so Bella came up, and I didn't know. So she came up, and she started pawing my leg to let me know that my sugars had dropped. And uh, she didn't, she wouldn't stop uh, pawing me until I checked my blood sugar. So I knew it was low. That way I could go and get something to to eat and stuff to bring my sugars back up. But she knows, like, if it gets too low, and she warns me if it gets way too high. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Thanks, Kev. Any 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 uh, any final words? Anything you want to say to Super Dave? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Super Dave is awesome. Super Dave is the reason why I was able to get involved with 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 Rob and his family and everything, which has been a it's been a great cause and everything. It's been which has been a great help with me. I love doing and to the vets out there. Uh, don't be afraid to to apply. Um, the hardest thing is filling out the stuff. Be honest, fill it out. Let them decide whether or not you're worthy or not. And you know, don't be afraid to go. You know, go. You will not be disappointed. Uh, you will enjoy every minute of it, and then you'll enjoy every second after that. You know, when you go home because you're going to have the tools to be able to continue on and have a means to, you know, be able to take care of yourself. Kev, one final question. When you first met Dave, Super Dave, did you have Dovetail Envy? (laughs) Uh, No, not (laughs) really. (laughs) You're supposed to say yes to make him feel good. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you. You're welcome. See you soon. Okay. Uh, that was great. That was awesome. I hope you people that uh, have been supporting our our efforts really come away from this understanding the good that you're doing. It's Kevin was uh, Kevin was a great example of. 
And I, again, I'm going to tell you, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just teach wood. But Kevin is a great example of what this program can do. And I was shocked when I read his review that he put on there. I would encourage you to go on. Is it still under? It's in a weird place. Not really. He came to the October class, and it's under the October class reviews. Of not. Well, but he came to October 2019, it yeah. and it's under the October 2020 class review. Well, it's the that's October not, that's, class. That's perfectly normal. Anyway, but you can find them there. All right, let's go in and fix this. Uh, I'm going to use my small router plane, and I need the smallest bit that I can find. So what we'll do is trap this. I got to protect this because it's uh, it is so soft. Uh, I need a couple pieces of something. Guess I can use MDF. Actually, I'll use the cedar. Okay. Um, what have we got? Oh, you already dug them out. Do we have one that's actually less than? I don't think so. That looks narrower, but it must not be. It isn't. Will that fit in there? Yep. That's got to be 330 seconds. That can't be an eighth. Because that is an eighth. This is the, uh, the Lee Nelson number 271. Small router plane. And I think Lee Nelson did a better job. Which one's this one? I think Lee Nelson did a better job than anybody else, including Stanley with their original, with this plane, and primarily because of the locking mechanism. So they've cut a square hole through this casting, and... Uh, the, you'll notice that the locking knob, which is brass, is hitting on this corner. So what it does, when you tighten it, it shoves it so it's tight against this wall and that wall, and it holds it square, and it holds it firmly in place. The original router plane, not so. And the round ones, not so. Square ones are nice and positive. So I've set it for the depth. Actually, I'll just, I'm just going to go... I can tell by the thickness of the shaving that we're off. Now I can turn that around. In fact, I should do that. Well, let's get in here as far as we can. Can you get one of these? Christmas is coming. Do you want to tell everybody what you got your wife for uh, anniversary present? So Ken bought his wife, he and his wife, e-bikes, which are made in Germany. This one's his. So we pedal it like a normal bike, but then you can have the electric motor kick in and assist you at variable a ver is it variable power setting Ken so if you're exhausted on the way home you don't have to pedal at all by the way did she know what she was getting was she excited yeah really you're not just saying that <laughs> So I made the mistake one Christmas of buying my wife a uh, toaster. Well, you could have bought her a, a radio, a wind-up radio like someone else. Who did that? No, it was a flashlight. Oh, yeah, Luther. A flashlight and a radio. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't forget the flashlight. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be that bad. 
toaster everybody uses. Yeah. All right, now I gotta go in and lay that bevel on there and just finish that. I'll actually purposely go a little bit deeper so I'm sure not to have anything hung up. Same thing at this end. Did she know what it was when she opened it? She just assumed it was a bike. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you had them all together. Okay, let's try that again. Jake, does that look the same to you? It doesn't look the same to me. Hi? You know, you know what I'm looking at? Mm-hmm. It's the reveal. Definitely isn't. Well, that was a problem, but maybe we didn't... Uh, So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check check this shoulder. Oh yeah, that's the problem too. Okay, well we fix that. So the way we're going to fix that will be with a shoulder plane. Right here. Flush with this side. Oh yeah. Actually, you know what? Not a shoulder plane. This is where we want to use a marking gauge. Because I want the reveal to be the same. So I'll set it. Should you clamp that in the vise? Now, I'm thinking I probably should, but I'm going to, I want to be able to see it better. So I'm using the 5 8 inch diameter cutter. Are they still on sale? Mm-hmm. Till when? I think, but I think it's only for newsletter subscribers. So if you're on the newsletter, we just put a sale on uh, all the different style cutters for the marking gauge. So this 5 8 is deep enough that I can make this cut. And it'll slice that. Give me a second pass. And the cedar is soft enough that you can you can easily cut that. I think I did it in one pass. Okay. Now I'll go through. Reset it. Ooh. That snap in your herd is where the grain changed direction on me, but it'll be hidden inside the groove, and that's going to be glued, so it won't matter. Now i got to do it on this side so I can see, but I'm just going to take my chisel and finish that off. I'll use the 17-degree. Uh, Thank you. 
Any more people to say hello to, Megan? Gary? Gary Burnett is here. Hey, Gary. Uh, Luther says that it was a med who told him that the wind-up flashlight would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course. Because he couldn't says, think of that on his own. Don't drag me into your bonehead decision. Who said that? I meant. Med. <laughs> okay, that's better. Well, I can't see that. Com combination of a couple of errors. Figured. Anytime you use a power tool, there's going to be something go wrong. All right, now we just got to clean this up. And what I'm going to do is just flush this up. be going the other way. So you're going to flush it up because it's probably the widest it's going to be? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I could have done this on the uh, on the shooting board. What did Ahmed say? Don't drag me into your bonehead place. Bonehead decision. Bonehead decision. Oh, bonehead decision. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly show a picture of uh, what Josh did, all the plaques he did. Jake just sent it to me. So. Where'd you get it? Uh, Josh sent, sent it to me. Oh, did he? Yeah. So did, he explain, did he explain what it is? Oh. Is it Purple Heart inlaid? I can't answer that. No, he did not to Jake on the text. Okay. Good job. So that looks nice and neat on the inside. Okay, now it's time to get this done. So I will go and cut a piece that is... Uh, We'll just do this. So eight and a half by anything. How are our bids? Just adding them up right now. Hi. She's adding right now. Did we? Uh, we didn't mention our draw. Every time we do every t every session, we do a draw for a uh, um, hundred dollar gift certificate for every one thousand dollar increment of. Purple Heart donation we receive. I don't need that. I got a piece right here. Now I'm just going to clean this up so I know I'm dealing with a nice flat side. Josh that texted you. Hmm? It wasn't Josh. It wasn't Josh? Who was it? Justin. Bernhoff, that's right. Huh? It wasn't Josh that texted me, it was Justin Bernhoff. Can't hear you. Oh, never mind. Alright, so that's going to be our side. And I'll identify the. Uh, 
Justin, Justin did confirm, though, that it is Purple Heart inlay. It is Purple Heart inlay. Cool. Okay, so this is my top edge, and this is going to be my face side. So we're going to fit this. We're going to fit this like this. And then once we get it, uh, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? I just need to know the extremes. I need to know the top and the bottom. How do we do it? And then I don't want to go in and make cuts. Oh, my goodness. I think. Well, what I can do is cut out the bulk of this material. If I cut out the bulk of this material, Jake, you're not helping me. Well, I can't spoon feed you all this information. True. Mm -hmm. True. I'm just try I'm trying to think of how I'm going to use this to reference that because but you get you you uh, you're going to have one you're going to have one setting the top then you got to change your fence in order to get the bottom setting but you don't know if you're going to have the top setting exactly where you want it until you actually do it is there some other way I'm not thinking of Set that down. Well, this should at least get me close. So we are just under seven eighths. About there. Here. Uh, what? Can, never mind. I wonder if I can put a... That's bare wood. It should be hard. I did. So if I push that... Use your marking gauge. Huh? Use your marking gauge well, to make sure that it's set the appropriate amount. <sighs> So this will give me the, the edges. Okay, so now we go through. We go through and we cut the bulk of it out. But the problem is I can't find the bottom. But I, yes, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can use the mark. Once we get this, we can use the marking gauge to transfer those two lines, referencing off of the top side. Okay, that makes sense. You got all that, Ken? Got it. What's our depth? Jeez, I don't know. You got it right there. What's that very wood? Well, well, I'll get it from this. So, I'm just gonna hog out the, so we want at least a half an inch. So at a half an inch, we should be okay for the first pass. That's my reference side. Okay. The, the first measurement's not that critical. It's the last measurement. This is the, no, so let me explain this. First, the, the outside of one part of the dado is no big deal. It's the second one that prevents any excess slop. Went the wrong way.
Okay. So now we can go. You set it off the other one, didn't you? Mm hmm? Yeah, but they're same. Aren't they the same? Can we we took be. the same piece and split it, I thought. I got uh, a little side rabbit plane that I could use. Probably I'm being too fussy because we're going to have to have a little bit of. Okay, so that's that's a little that's a little too tight. That's good. Same same setting. Okay, so now. I could use that setting as the first cut on the drawer and then I know I've got one because we want to get the position right in terms of height. Okay, so at this point, that slides nicely actually but it's also right up tight, so there's no room for movement there at all. So I think what we should do is leave that setting and do the, and cut both sides of the drawer. Now, how much extra? It's deeper than it needs to be, and I don't want it to be any deeper than it has to be because we, it's just taken away from the strength of the drawer. So I'm going to drop that down a little bit. Okay. Now. Okay, so. I know we, where the blade starts. Yeah. Yeah. There. I'm missing that pencil drawer, or that pencil pocket. When are our new aprons coming, by the way? I get the, asked. The frequently. last sample is on its way. The final proof? The final proof. Okay, there's where the saw blade starts cutting. 
So what I'm doing, in case you don't know, I've got a piece with a square end on it and I just keep moving it until it just starts to make contact with the blade. So there's where the blade ends. Okay, so we take the drawer. Might be a good idea to leave that bottom in there just to stiffen it up a little bit. We're gonna reference off of the top, but now we need to know, we need to know where to stop. We know we're gonna cut all the way through, but we're gonna stop somewhere up here because that's going to be our stop for, we want the drawer to be flush or set in a little bit. We want it to be set in a little bit. Doesn't look, because we've got this set in a little bit. Actually, we don't. We have a flush, just a little bead around there. I, I don't think we want it set in. So let's use combination square again. And the advantage of the combination square is it's precise. So we'll set this from the front. Pretty boring for you, Frick, when nothing goes wrong, huh? I know. <laughs> nothing to troubleshoot? Current bid on the shaker box is 425. Pardon? Current bid on the shaker box is 425. Well, we'll definitely be passing that one on tonight. Poor Danny's not here to defend himself, I don't think. Okay, so this is my setting from the front. And I don't want to draw on this more than I have to. So down from the top, I'll just get an approximate. So we're going to stop. Hate to cut through those pins. Stop right there. Now, when we do this, when we do this, we're going to be sitting like so. We have to transfer this line. Ah, oh, shoot. I, okay, I got a, I got to, uh, I need a square to draw a line out from the fence. You can probably draw it on the throat plate, can't you? Yeah. This one right here, right? thing on the back. Okay. Now we've got to put a mark here. Five hundred on the what? On the box. On the shaker box. Mm -hmm. So that will, that'll allow us to stop on this one, and then this one, we've got to set down. So we need to transfer the line over here as well. Okay. And this is our lowest mark. So we're, we're referencing off of the top edge. We're going to make that cut. When that line gets to that line, we stop. I'm going to stop just a little bit before. OK, that's good. I can go right to it. OK, 
Okay, so that's the bottom line on that one. On this one, we drop down onto that line and go right through. Okay. So now we're going to come forward. We're going to come to within about a half an inch. Right? Yeah. You want to start moving up the the drawer. Well, if we come to a half an inch, then we can then we can dial it in from there. So I'll set this for a half an inch, and then you're just gonna hog out the weight. Yeah, and then we'll just remove the material Wait. in the middle. Okay. Referencing off of the top edge. I'm saying this out loud, not just for your benefit, but for mine. Drop down onto the line. Make the cut through. Right. This side, make the cut, stop at the first line, which is right there. Lift off. Okay, so now, now move the fence away. Yeah, so we'll go over less than an eighth. The fact that you have to do this multiple times, you either get good or you'll screw up for sure. Okay, another. Stop at the first line. One more. Just do that and see if it's enough. Move over just a little bit more. That takes it all out. Stop at the line, first one. Drop it down. Okay. That's not clean. Okay. So it's just a little feather. Left. Okay, so now. We go back to the half inch. I probably didn't need to go through all that. Okay. So we're at a half inch. Actually, okay, so this is where I'm going to come in. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to set it well that's just as a gauge block still move that a edge against the fence, stop at the first line, drop down on the back line, Okay, that's a little bit snug. I want it to have to come down off the top. I want it to be just, just a little bit of play. So I'm gonna move that over. 
by moving that over, yeah. that's going to drop our drawer down from the top. Just, just a little tiny bit. Now I'm going to check it by doing this. I don't think that moved at all. Nope. Okay, that's that's right on. Out of time. Oh boy. We got we'll wax that and that'll and we may still need to take a little bit off the side and we got to go in and we got to square up that end and we may end up having to come in here see that we don't have that's not that's that something's out of whack but not bad but we can take a little bit off of that front to change that i hope just can't do anything to the drawer but that's another reason why you actually want to have the drawer set in a little bit. If you make it perfectly flush, then everything has got to be spot on. All right. Okay, we're out. Um, let me decide on how we're going to handle this for that last little bit. We don't have enough for a full episode. So we may Maybe do we do. Huh? Maybe we do. Oh. Maybe we do. We'll let, sure. you know. we'll let you know. We'll let you know. Yeah, that's right, Ken. Do part of it and the other part on Q and A. Okay, so we're almost out. Where are we? Anybody left to say hello to? We've over 1,400 people. Oh, that's good. Welcome. Oh, Thank you, folks. Danny's here. Danny, is Danny letting it go? I think so. It's at 500. Being a good sport. That's great. That's awesome. $500. It's a beautiful box. My wife doesn't know it's being auctioned off or else she would be bidding on it. This could be a little bit of a plan there. Anything on the guitar? Anything on the, on the, on the saw? Should have demonstrated it. How are we for donations? How many, how many gift certificates are we giving away? One? Okay, well, let's do that, Frick. Any, anything left to uh, bring up? What? I sent Frick pictures of the shaker box D did that he can put on. This one? Yeah. There they are. Did you show the? Did you show a? You said you were going to. I, I was working. Did you show a picture of the plaque that everybody's going to get? Yes. Yeah. So everybody that ha everybody that is getting a bench is going to receive one of those plaques. So here, if you're a combat wounded vet that has been to our class as one of our as one of our uh, scholarship vets we want to give you a bench if you don't have one so you need to contact me i'm slowly working my way through the list but anyway we have several i think there's eight or nine benches that are waiting to be sent out pardon 525 525 i'm not stalling to get the bids up i'm just happy i want to be able to tell you this so let us know and everybody who has a has who has received a bench is going to get one of these plaques to attach to it all right, thank you to Frick. I'll also do a thank you afterwards. Make sure you don't screw up the draw. <laughs> All right, let's do the draw. All right, everybody knew how to get involved or how to get their name in on the draw. Yep, here we go. One winner tonight, and the winner is Aaron Smith. Aaron from? 
Uh, Who doesn't say? Uh, he's from Iowa. Iowa. Congratulations, Aaron. So, uh, we'll do the, uh, where's our bidding on the? 525. 525, going once. How much delay is there, Frick? Quite a bit. Yeah, about 10 the seconds. The, like, they just got shown the box on the thing, so you got to do it in a minute. All right. Well, I'll, I'll thank everybody, and then we'll, we'll, we'll end the bidding on the, on the shaker box, so you've got that much time to uh, think about it. Thank you to Frick behind the camera. This was a flawless. We were actually here on time waiting to start. That's never happened before. Everything, everything went slick. Um, by the way, thanks to, thanks to Alan, who made the suggestion about getting the power supply. Did we even use it yet? We haven't hooked it up yet. I don't no. no, we bought a power supply that gives us... Battery backup. A battery backup, so we won't have that happen to us again. Thanks to Jake behind the camera. Everybody loves this camera work. They think it's flawless. Thanks to Megan for keeping track of all the numbers. Thanks to Ken. What did you do tonight, Ken? Very little. <laughs> He's on the Ken. chat. Yep. Thanks for Ken for doing very little. <laughs> Ken is here for moral support. I think Luther probably is not sharing your questions, is he? Mark yeah. says good night. Mark, good night, Mark. We're going to go through that whole list. We could be here a while. <laughs> and thanks to Super Dave who's not on. Yeah, no thanks. thanks to Super Dave. Yeah, no thanks to Super Dave. That's right. Thanks to Kevin. Really appreciate it, Kevin. You did an awesome job. Uh, yeah, that, that will stay on there for a long time. And thanks to Colonel Luther for all that he does, because he does far more than we ever give him credit for. And he knows uh, we love him. All right. Who's getting this beautiful... Roger... Hohen? Hohen? Holland? H-O-E-N-E. -E. Hohen? Hohen from? Doesn't say. Doesn't say. Our shaker box found oh, a home. Oh, Christine just uh, put in 550. Who did? Was that legitimate? Yeah, she she's the one that bid 500. Oh, because there's a delay. How are we going to cut this off without offending anybody? <laughs> so, ro Roger, I have to retract unless he wants to bid. Oh, my. Is there a time? We can't. I, I don't know how we do this. I, I say we just give it to Christine. She's bid five fifty. Is that right? That would be ladies before gentlemen. Chivalry is not dead here. Okay, final right. final yeah. winner. Yeah, we give it to Christine. Christine for five hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you, Christine. Where's Christine from? I just swiped out of Roger's side. <laughs> what? Swipe. She sniped it. Sniped it out she of Roger's she did. <laughs> Well, Roger, you can contact, you can contact Keith. Um, does he have a website, Jake? I don't think so. If you really want one, if you weren't just doing it to be super generous to the Purple Art Project, if you get a hold of us, we'll get you in touch with Roger so that you can, uh, uh, Ken, so that you can get Keith. Keith. Sorry. No oh, names. Can't keep all my kids straight either. All right. Next week is our question and answer. Same time, same place. Six o'clock Eastern. And have a good, great week. It's summer. Enjoy it. And we will see you all next Saturday night. Thanks for being here.